In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, do problem 5 of this assignment, project uh, 3.1.7. And problem 5 is the, uh, the elevator problem. In this video, I'm going to uh, just show you how to uh, solve the first part of the program, and that's uh, controlling the elevator door. I'm going to ask you to take a look at uh, the reference guide, the Ro Robot C reference guide, and uh, go to page approximately page 18, and uh, they discuss this command called uh, switch case. It's two pages. Uh, they give you an example on the next page, showing you how the how the command works. And uh, here's the program. Uh, as far as setup. Uh, my motors. I have a motor, I call it you know, import one, it's called door. It's import one, so uh, you don't need a motor controller. Uh, it's a two wire, plugs directly into port one. It's a VEX 393. On my uh, analog settings, these are the analog settings. I have my uh, light sensor, I call it obstacle, and this simulates some, someone walking in front of the light beam and causing the, uh, the door to uh, reverse itself. Under my digital sensors, I have my uh, encoder in port 1 and 2. And the only reason I'm using the encoder is uh, just to s watch the rotation of my motor on my screen, whether the motor is going positive or rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. I have two uh, limit switches. One I call door open, the other door closed. And I have uh, two LEDs, uh, my standard LEDs here, a red one in port 11 and a green one in port 12. And so here's the program. I start out by, uh, I'm going to be using a, a counter. I call it T. I initialize it at zero. I'm using this um, a variable called state. Now there are various states that the elevator door will be in and I define those with uh, if statements. So I start out, uh, I, I initialize state as 1 and uh, I go into my task main and I define uh, five different states. Uh, the first state is just an, an initialization state and essentially the program is just going through this while loop, just rotating, waiting for something to happen. In, in practice, this would be a, a separate sub-program that would be called. I would call this program and say, I'm ready to activate the door, run this program. And so uh, I would call the program, and it would, the, the first thing it would do is um, it would go into, uh, uh, it would go through these series of uh, if statements. So if the door is closed and the LED is off, I'm in state 2. If the door is open and the time count is less than 5, I'm in state 3, and so forth. If, if the door is open and the time is greater than 5, then I'm in state 4. And this, uh, the, the time I'm counting here is how long the door is open, waiting for the passengers to enter into the elevator before the door starts closing. And then uh, this, if, um, if there's an obstacle in the path, in the light beam path, and it's broken, um, I go back to state two, and I open the door. Uh, and then I, I start over again. I wait for the, the, the obstacle to be cleared, and then I close the door, and so forth. And my last state five is where I've closed the door and I exit the routine and go back to my main program. So uh, these are my if statements, and I define the five different states. And then the way this works, uh, it drops down through here and it determines what the state, the current state is, the current state of, uh, of the program. And then it'll activate these cases. So if uh, if I'm uh, if my if statement uh, determines that I'm in state 4, 
it'll come down, it'll drop through these three, it'll ignore these three, and it'll go straight to four. And it'll do what's in this case. So it'll start the motor in a negative direction, and it'll set the sensor value red on, and then it'll break, it'll come back, it'll ask these questions, the questions again, it'll just determine what state I'm in, and it'll come back, and it'll do my, uh, it'll, it'll do the next next state. So this is one way of looking at, at the problem. There are many ways of solving this problem, but uh, this would be um, uh, um, applicable uh, not only to this uh, elevator opening the, the elevator door, but also to uh, operating the elevator itself from one floor to another. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, compile the program. and download it. Uh, so you, want, you want to view your sensors, uh, in particular your light sensor. Right now I have my, uh, my light sensor set at 600 and you can see it's bouncing around at uh, my ambient light is at 578. If it goes um, if I cover it, it'll go over 600, and that will, will simulate my obstacle, someone walking in front of the light beam and interrupting the closing of the door. Uh, you're going to want to note your, the direction of your encoder. If it's positive, the, uh, your door should be uh, closing. If it's negative, it's, it's, I'm sorry, if it's positive, it's opening. If it's negative, it's closing. Uh, watch the operation of your LEDs. Under uh, global variables, you'll see your uh, the time, uh, and it should count from one to ten, and then reset itself. And here is my current state. So right now I'm currently in state three. Uh, once I start it, I'm gonna it re it clears everything. So if I hit clear, I go back to state zero, and uh, a variable my time is zero. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start it and uh, show you the operation, the way this works. I start it and it's going to do nothing. It's just going to uh, go through. It's waiting for me, so I'm going to press uh, my limit switch, which is uh, simulates the door being closed. So the program recognizes that, that the door is closed and it needs to be opened. And now the door is opened and it hits the limit switch and now the door is fully open. I close that and I hold it shut. And as I'm holding it shut, it's counting. And it hit five, it counted five, and it reached five. I release the door open and now the door is closing. And once it closes, it trips the limit switch and it turns off. And I go down to case five and I return, I close this uh, this task, this what's referred to as a class, and I go back to my main program.